What is up my friends and how's it going and welcome back to the 19th episode of our Let's Play series as Roma with your fellow comrade Summary. I do apologize it has been a long time since my previous episode but I have been busy with real life stuff as well as uh, of course modding for the Divide at Tempera 1.33 public beta which is now integrated into the main Divide at Tempera mod. However, of course, to keep the save game uncorrupted, I'm still playing on 1.32. Uh, however, before we hop on into the campaign, uh, which has taken a very long time, I must admit, as uh, Roma wasn't really built in a day, as well as my Roma series hasn't actually completed any quickly. But the objective of the remainder of this campaign is to finish the campaign as quickly as possible, wipe out the remaining civil war faction, and then create the Roman Empire at its heights and hopefully I will be able to do that well within the 25 mark episode and pretty much after the Civil War I will not be uh, favoring a historical expansion uh, as I will be trying to conquer a lot of things simultaneously to kind of bring a quick end to the campaign so that I can play the next series on the 1.33 uh, you know patch and of course, I have put up in the community polls a voting for what will be the next Hellenic faction that I will be playing as. And uh, currently, I am, uh, you know, putting up for vote the kind of Hellenic faction. So it's either going to be a Diadochi, which are the successor kingdoms of Alexander's empire, or the Greek city-states such as Sparta, Athens, uh, Rhodos and Pergamon, or even the Greek settlers or colonists such as Syracuse, Massalia, uh, the Crimean or the Bosphoran Kingdom as well as Colchis and I do encourage all of you to vote and hopefully um, you know we will have any of the Hellenic factions and in fact when it comes to the Hellenic factions they are one if not my favorite factions in the game because I really really like playing as Hellenic factions so that should be a very interesting let's play series however without any further ado let us hop into the campaign and of course due to real life stuff I am not going to be continuing the cinematic intros as I had done for the previous episode and uh, pretty much I am going to explain what happened in the previous episode. We basically had Octavius Caesar march into Sicily defeating both uh, Sextus Pompeius as well as Lepidus and simultaneously in Africa we have sent an invasion of two legionaries to wipe out Lepidus's holdings in Africa and they are busy kind of uh, marching their way across Africa as you can see we have managed to conquer the majority of Africa uh, and the last remaining stronghold is a Cyrene uh, which is currently being uh, navally blockaded by classes to Italica Ferox. However all the way in the east uh, we are still fighting this civil war and I have decided to you know to sally forth my two legions that were in the region and i believe it's legio 4 scythica as well as legio 15 apollinaris and they are going to be conquering the eastern extremities of the uh, roman civil war faction because they are currently at war with the parthians and really really don't want the parthians to you know take over some of these lands uh, that were under roman control as we will then have to fight against the parthians and i really don't want to be doing that just as yet uh, however, you might have noticed uh, in the tactical map overview that the Civil War faction has kind of changed. It was the Triumviratus Romanus in the previous episode and that is because it consisted of the Roman Triumvirate with Lepidus, Mark Anthony and of course the populist uh, uh, Sextus Pompeius. However, since two of them have been defeated and all that's uh, left is Antony's faction, we have gone ahead and remodded the faction into Antony Rome, which is basically the Roman faction under Mark Antony. Speaking of Mark Antony, he is down here in Apollonia, uh, leading Legio 7 Claudia Pia Fidelis. And of course, he is uh, supported by two other legionaries. However, we do have Octavius over here, and he is busy recruiting up for the battle that will happen in the next turn. And it will be a pretty ma massive battle because we have a lot of legionaries in the area. So hopefully that will be a very exciting battle. And... Uh, Yes, however, that being said and done, a quick look at, uh, you know, our situation. We have gone ahead and renamed some of the, um, uh, some of the governors to the more Augustan era governor names. And we have previously, we used to name this Lictoris, which is basically an adjective. However, uh, 
it, it, it should be a noun, which basically means governor. So, Lictor of Thapsus Minor. And basically the uh, proconsul of Africa. Uh, and of course we have pro uh, uh Sorry, pro praetore. And uh, the pro praetore were basically the governors of the Roman, uh, you know, principate. However, the way how Augustus divided his realm is that he kept the core regions of the Roman Republic within the hands of the senatorial class for governance. And he basically, uh, uh, you know, directly controlled the extremities of the empire. And that is because of several reasons. One is the extremities were more lucrative. So he always had, uh, you know, massive funds. And for the second reason is that the extremities needed armies. And, you know, as long as he was in control of the armies, it would be very difficult to depose him. Uh, and that is because as Marius's reforms have proven, uh, he who commands the armies was basically in control of Rome. So he wanted to prevent a repeat of the same towards his own rule. And therefore, he divided it into two. Now, the people who were in charge of uh, the imperial provinces, which was under Augustus, were known as uh, proconsulares uh, or proconsulare. And the people who were in charge of, um, you know, senatorial provinces were propretore. However, with two exceptions of proconsul uh, being in Africa as well as in Asia. However, that being said and done, let us quickly hop on back into the campaign have a quick look at our economy as you can see latium is starting to make its income once again africa por consularis is being renamed as per my new mod and it is available on the steam where these province names have been modified as you can see we have lugdunensis instead of uh, gallia um, and we have mauritania caesariensis instead of media as well as mauritania tingitana which was the original uh, mauritania uh, Africa Pro, Pro Consularis, of course, Achaea, Thracia, if most, uh, Moesia, uh, and of course many more. Uh, however, yes, when we are talking about our economic situation, as you can see, we are still making a deficit of minus 79,000 denarii per turn, but thankfully we have about 11 million, million denarii per turn, uh, or sorry, 11 million denarii in our treasury, which means we have a decent amount of time before we run out of funds. However, of course, we have to reverse the situation politically, so to speak. I'm um, going to go ahead and hide the deceased. Um, we have an insane amount of influence. As you can see, we are outright tyrant over the Senate. And as such, we are getting a lot of debuffs and we really want to keep decreasing our influence. And the only way to do this is to send... Uh, you know, members of our rival uh, political parties on missions that will eventually give them more gravitas and as such decrease our influence. And the goal or the objective would be to end the civil war. And once the civil war is over, we will get a loyalty bonuses for all the political parties. And speaking of political parties, I have managed to rename them into the accurate uh, Roman political parties. As you can see, we have the Com uh, Comitia Centuriata. And these guys were in charge of declarations of war as well as anything pertaining to the military. We had the Concilium Plebis, which was basically the tribune of the plebs. And they were basically more of the commoners. And, uh, and finally, we of course have the Senatus Romanus, uh, which is basically the Roman Senate. However, during the time of Augustus, these were nothing more than titular. Of course, he held all the power from, you know, behind the scenes. He was a, in all effects, an emperor, but... Uh, you know, not uh, you know, very public or very upfront about it. However, the objective is, of course, we want to end the civil war and simultaneously get to about 65% influence, so drop our influence just enough at the time of uh, the end of the civil war and then quickly convert into an empire. I mean, we can do it right now. That will give us a public order, uh, you know, uh, disadvantage as well as of course the loyalty for all the parties while we're not too concerned about the loyalties for all the parties as you can see most of our parties are extremely loyal we are concerned definitely about the public order as you can see certain provinces are having really bad public order and that is due to of course 
the fact that we are in a civil war. So we'll kind of have to end the civil war simultaneously, uh, take advantage of that bonus loyalty that we have for a short time after ending the civil war, and of course, uh, getting rid of the public order malice, and that is the ideal time to enact the government reform change. However, uh, that being said and done, I think I've done explaining the entire situation of this campaign so far, and so we are gonna go ahead, end the turn, and I will see you all in the future when I'm ready to attack Legio 7 Claudia Pia Fidelis and attack last remaining Roman Triumvirate, uh, Marcus Cretus uh, Antonius. All right, so welcome to the next turn and we have an event of corruption. We are going to go for the inspired endeavors as that helps with the public order situation a little bit. Some of our uh, rival political party members have returned for mission as well as some of our characters have leveled up. Of course, I'm going to do all of this in the turn between turns because, uh, as you know, it's going to take a, a lot of time to fight this battle. As you will see, um, my estimate will be it'll be about a one hour battle. So uh, that's pretty much going to cover pretty much the entire episode. However, just before I go ahead and do that, of course, we are trying to, you know, rebuild all of our provinces as well as rebuild our armies that we have lost due to the breakaway civil war faction. And of course, I'm not going to showcase that because then it would make the episode extremely long. However, before we go ahead and hop into the battle in Macedonia, or Macedonia, as we are Romans, we'll call it Macedonia. We are going to move Legio 15 Apollonaris to capture Gabala. And it should be a pretty easy auto resolve. So let's go ahead and auto resolve that one. And we are going to peacefully occupy it as it is Roman. Uh, and of course we are going to of course uh, you know build up this province uh, as ideal as possible but it's going to be done in turn between turns and after the civil war is over i'm going to give you a rundown of how i set up my empire meanwhile we're going to move legio for Skitica to attack trapezos go ahead give a pretty good auto resolve and once again we're going to simply occupy it because it is roman culture and over here we want to Make this into a food province, I think, or I don't really think it needs to be a food province since we have quite a lot of food. Um, however, maybe in the future we will have to respec it into a food province when we conquer some of our economic provinces back again. However, without any further ado, let us hop into the situation over here, and that is basically going to be the big one for this episode. We have Octavius over here, he's in charge of his favorite Legio 10 Gemina, which has been lame renamed from Legio 10 Equestris, that was Caesar's favorite legion. Uh, however, as you can see, I have gone ahead and changed up the composition of this legion a fair bit, I believe. And that is because I want to have as many legionaries as possible. I want to have a lot of melee infantry as possible. Uh, because when I do attack this army, the way it works is that I can't have all three legions, all four or five legions in the battlefield at the same time. The maximum amount of units allowed on the battlefield is 41, so I really want to have that core of infantry. And of course, our other legionaries will kind of sort of trickle down into the battle as we kind of try to cycle out our troops of the battle. Uh, however, that being said and done, in the previous episode, I have learnt that uh, the Roman armies we are up against also have a Scorpion, which means uh, we don't have an artillery advantage. And I actually discovered that having a Ballista during the Imperial reforms is much more efficient than having a Scorpion. And that is because during the Imperial reforms, the Ballista also benefit from the, uh, you know, the exclusion of a campaign range movement, which means a Ballista can move as fast as your main army. And in most cases, um, in the campaign map, a Balliste will slow down your army on the campaign map. So you don't want to have a Balliste for that reason if, in case, you need campaign range movement. However, as the Romans, during the Marian reforms, your Scorpios have uh, no campaign range movement penalties. And in the Imperial reforms, uh, pretty much almost all of your artillery have no campaign range uh, movement range penalties. However, that being said and done, let us quickly uh, attack over here. We have a Legio 22 Valeria Victris all the way up here in the port. And of course, they are lacking the Ballistae. So we're going to move them all the way up to Dyrrhachium, where they can recruit their Ballistae. They will not be taking part in the battle ahead. However, they should be able to 
participate in the future campaigns of uh, of course you know asia and uh yes without any further ado let us have a quick look of all of our armies over here see which armies i can get to the fight and yes ideally i want to get all four of these armies as close as possible to mark antony so let's go ahead and move them and finally we're going to move octavius himself and initiate the battle so there we go we keep moving our armies as close as we can so that they're all reinforcing now we are going to attack mark antony himself he will stand and fight do have the numerical superiority i could auto resolve it it's going to be 63 percent however where's the fun in that so let's uh, quick save over here hop onto the battle and i will see you all in the battle all right so here we are in the battle battle has commenced we have gone ahead and arrayed our troops in a massive line front line as you can see over here we have our gallic auxiliary spearmen on the flanks with our legionary cohorts in the center and of course we are going to use our uh, ballistae we have two ballistae this is quite a different composition and on the flanks we have our, our batavian uh, cavalry as well as our gallic skirmishers um However, straight off the bat, at the very beginning of the battle, we have managed to land a killing blow to Mark Antony and he has died in the very first shot of the Ballistae. And the Ballistae, uh, as you will see in this battle, will perform really clutch. However, as you can see, the first legion that we are up against, Legio 7 Claudia Pia Fidelis, is quickly rushing out of their fort in order to engage us and they are under heavy fire by our balliste completely demolishing uh, the troops over there however um, with this new formation i have learned that it has been a lot more effective as i have played a lot with 40 unit armies uh, while testing rise of the republic campaign so i have become a lot more efficient at managing 41 unit stacks as you can see on the right flank they do have a bunch of cavalry that's pushing in to the battle and this is where, um, you know, I absolutely uh, dominate the fighting. Um, and straight off the bat, I kind of move in my cavalry to give in a charge. They managed to do so quite successfully, catching off that bit, uh, you know, by surprise and caught the entire enemy cavalry that's already taken quite a lot of casualties and as such are already wavering. So pretty much absolutely dominated the fighting on that side. Uh, meanwhile, they are trying to reinforce with the remainder of their cavalry. And I decide to pull back my cavalry as I don't want to get bogged down. And uh, simultaneously, I push up my front lines because if you move in opposite directions, as you see over here, uh, the movement is really smooth. As you see, none of my troops are actually getting stuck be between the movement except this unit because my units have kind of stopped moving. And meanwhile, the cavalry kind of pushes off from attacking my spearmen. So that was really well managed. Meanwhile, all the way over here on the left flank, uh, we are just, uh, you know, trying to chase this unit. And chasing a unit when you have javelins is really good because they face their backs towards you and you will be able to deal a lot of casualties. As you can see over there, cavalrymen just absolutely getting demolished. While Octavian himself supervising the battle from behind and, uh, you know, uh, kind of motivating his men forward meanwhile our front line as you notice some of them have gone in that defensive formation because they have already thrown their pila and uh, slowly but surely i kind of uh, issue the order for the other units and notice this cavalry is pretty weak 47 units so if i'm able to chase it once again and uh, issue some more or deal some more javelin damage but i do manage to catch them which is even better uh, meanwhile, on the right flank, I cycle out my cavalry once again. And as you can see, I've only lost a single unit of cavalry. So I absolutely micro this battle to perfection. And now that I notice that the front line is almost engaged, I start to issue the orders for my skirmisher units to kind of maneuver. Meanwhile, on the right flank, my cavalry is doing a good job in circling their own cavalry. And... Uh, uh, you know, we have uh, really managed to completely negate the enemy cavalry over here. 
and this is the remainder of the general's unit which is taking quite a bit of casualties. Meanwhile my first cohort is actually soaking up a lot of the archer fires as they are a magnet for archer fires so they will be the unit that will severely underperform in this battle unfortunately. Uh, I also issue my cavalry once they dispatch the general's unit to charge into this unit and as you can see already they are losing decisively. And while all the way on that left flank you can see uh, we are going to go ahead and charge this unit. We caught it off guard and we are absolutely demolishing this unit. So pretty much on both sides of the battlefield we are doing absolutely amazing and even on the left flank we haven't lost a single unit of cavalry so far. However, back to the right flank, as you can see, things are looking quite good. And I have decided to pull out my cavalry, as it has been quite a good engagement so far. And uh, meanwhile, my skirmishers have nicely positioned and they are throwing into the unshielded side of the enemy. So this enemy is losing decisively, as you can see. And uh, so far, the battle is going absolutely in our favor. And while on the far left flank I notice this isolated cohort unit and I kind of decide to circle it from all sides and charge as uh, charging a unit from all four directions actually ends up completely demolishing their morale. So if you're not able to shake off a melee unit I recommend to charge at it from all directions. Meanwhile considering that some of the preliminary units have already routed we are beginning to see a couple of reinforcements join into the battle. As you can see over here, it's going to be a devastating charge. They're still running. They're absolutely demolished and absolutely demolished and again and again and again. And they will pretty much rout pretty instantly with that maneuver. Meanwhile, over here, I decide to pull out my missile troops and kind of charge in with one of my legionary units to kind of pin them down. The idea is to pin them down and then use these missile units to throw javelins into the backs of this unit. Uh, meanwhile, our cavalry has, on the right flank, has engaged their missile troops. That is the plan, and uh, I am also simultaneously pulling in my left flank to kind of assist with that. However, over here in the middle, one of the cavalry manages to get a decent charge off against my own cavalry. So we're starting to see some casualties for our cavalry units, as you can see over here, but so far so good. We've almost managed to secure our victory against the first legion. We have another two more legions to deal with after we have done wiping out this unit. Meanwhile, uh, I notice uh, that I'm not able to assist my right flank in time, so I kind of form up in anticipation to attack the coming reinforcement. Sooner or later, I will have to deal with the Scorpio unit so that it doesn't do as many casualties. Meanwhile, over here, as you can see, our javelins have dispatched that unit effectively. So, a really good way of your javelin troops is by using them to flank while over here on the left flank my javelins have exhausted all of their ammunition so they are going to charge in keep in mind they have a very good run speed um, and as such they can be really mobile on the battlefield and are really good as shock and flank troops so that's pretty much what they are doing over here and uh, this unit has already taken a lot of casualties will absolutely be demolished as a result of it over here, I notice that we have an opportunity of killing second general of the army. So I am doing that. And all the way over here in the back, you can see my artillery. They have completely exhausted uh, their ammunition. And as such, they have done a really good job almost uh, totaling 1,000 kills. In fact, totaling 1,001 kills. And the idea is to get them to the edge of the battlefield and out of the battle so that I can get some of my reinforcements. Meanwhile, over here, I did use one cavalry unit to kind of pin down this cavalry so that it doesn't get a charge off on this cluster over here. And in order to assist them, I send another two regiments of cavalry to circle them. While our front line is looking a bit staggered and I notice some of the enemy reinforcements coming in from the east. So I kind of get some of my spearmen out of formation to quickly charge. But these spearmen are incredibly slow so they're not going to be able to catch up. And I kind of do it in succession and I realize there's no point of these two spear units. So I kind of send in my first cohort and even they just about managed to pin down that cavalry which is kind of nice. And all of my spearmen then join in the fight. However, over here, as you can see, uh, we have dealt with that reinforcing cavalry and I decide to send one extra cavalry to deal 
with their scorpion unit and pretty much prevent it from dealing any more damage as you can see they have already uh, deal, uh, dealt uh, 85 sorry casualties 88 right now so uh, things not looking good with that scorpion unit still in the game but it is what it is and meanwhile over here I'm pretty fine with the enemy deciding to use their cavalry against my spearmen they are absolutely going to take a lot of a lot of damage they decide to you know kind of attack over here and fighting is pretty brutal it's pretty even I would say but uh, all in all, um, you know, we are going to win that engagement because we are spear units and they are going to lose decisively and as such they are going to pull away. And now I decide that I really really need to mop up the center over here and really mop up the first army because um, you know, I really need to reform my lines as you can see a lot of them are not uh, positioned ideally they have kind of uh, shifted. So I really want to reposition in order to prepare for the next two legions that will join the battle. So I am slowly encircling each and every single unit and hopefully we'll be able to break the entire enemy front line as quickly as possible. Well over here a bunch of cavalry that I don't notice uh, in the battle of reinforcing cavalry will get a clean charge of Octavius himself. Uh, thankfully I do have some spearmen that are idle and they will go ahead and support Octavius and Kind of reverse the situation so here's a here's a kind of like a little bit of an advice if you kind of mismanage your micro if you have your units at the right position of the battlefield you can always turn around the situation with a quick uh you know judgment or reaction call um one thing to do is never panic and retreat with your horsemen because retreating horsemen take a lot of casualties so as you can see these guys get a pretty clear charge over here octavius standing really um you know, unawares of what is happening because my attention is completely on this right flank as it seems to be a little bit chaotic over here on the right we have an isolated spear unit and my idea is to retreat them before they are like picked off uh, by these skirmisher cavalry so and i have to be really careful of what's going on over here because i could get charged in the rear if i'm not too careful so my focus is entirely on the right flank while on the left flank uh, octavian is still inactive uh, however, now the priority is to kind of deal with this cavalry and I decide I'm not able to do it as quickly as I would like. And uh, that would mean that the next cavalry would be able to reinforce it. So I'm a bit cautious over what's happening over there. Uh, I do notice what's happening to Octavius right now. So I do send in a spear unit to kind of support them and turn the tide of the battle. While I notice this cavalry is not going to be able to be stopped in time. So I send in a cavalry and they kind of start to take fair bit of casualties as a result of that meanwhile the situation on my right flank is a bit clear i am reforming my spearmen to kind of uh, create another front to prevent any of the incoming enemy cavalry reinforcements and uh, pretty much trying to reorganize my front line uh, meanwhile uh, my ballistae have gotten off the battlefield as well so i should be able to get some reinforcements and i have gotten reinforcements of two of my generals of uh, the reinforcing legion so that is always good news and really bad news for this cavalry as you can see it's already retreated because i managed to send in my spearmen and actually deal more casualties to them than i had sustained from that micromanagement error however at this point of time i realized that you know it's time to reorganize my front line as quickly as i can uh, get in my um my skirmisher units and as you can see they've done actually quite well considering they are 175 and uh, they have averaged about 150 kills this one over here getting 217 kills which is phenomenal this one over here getting 232 kills which is crazy good meanwhile our generals who have just joined the battle have done great in routing that enemy cavalry so i pulled them back group them up with octavius so they're gonna form a group of cavalry and meanwhile things are still looking a little bit uh, dicey on our right flank so we are quickly going to try to resolve that situation over here once again the battle is being a little bit of a slog fest i have taken a bit of casualties but these three cavalry are doing quite fine i'm pulling the cavalry that has taken a fair bit of casualties but i decide what the heck why not give it one more charge to kind of push uh the uh, the uh, odds of this combat that's happening over here in our favor so that we can get all of our cavalry out and into relative safety before 
their reinforcements join the battle and hopefully reorganize our entire front line. And uh, pretty much after that, my main focus is to preserve our auxiliary troops because I don't really mind losing core Roman troops because they can be recruited from literally any province within my realm. However, uh, auxiliary troops, and in this specific case, the Batavian auxiliary troops, should they actually take a lot of casualties, they will be wiped off from my uh, you know my armies and then I'll have to recruit them all the way from their appropriate area of recruitment which is in the case of the Batavian cavalry all the way in Germania Minor and we are fighting of course all the way in Macedon so I don't want that to happen absolutely if I want to keep the offensive uh, in this campaign in Macedonica I really need to preserve uh, all of my auxiliary troops as best as I can and uh, realizing that I start to pull off some of my more depleted auxiliary troops and start to retreat them from the battlefield so that I get a fresh bunch of auxiliary troops as you can see this is a French bunch of auxiliary troops meanwhile we have another general joining the fray as well as another uh, Batavian uh, or oh, sorry Gallic cavalry now joining uh, the fight and pretty much the same goes for my spear unit over here that's being sort of kind of isolated. So I kind of decide to use my general units to kind of assist it over here. It is losing slightly despite being a spear unit because it is absolutely surrounded. And uh, the numerical superiority is a bit too much for it to handle. My generals manage to come in clutch at the right time. And uh, what I am going to do over here is just fast forward a bit. Have about okay never mind that is really making the battle lag a lot so i'm <laughs> gonna keep it on that normal speed uh it was worth a shot i guess and while i notice this cavalry is retreating so i charge into it to make sure it never comes back into the battle but it's already completely broken so it's a bit of a waste i could have dedicated uh, my general to continue with his original target which was this unit over here However, there's nothing too bad. And now I notice uh, you know, that the enemy is not really trying to engage me. And they are actually trying to link up. So they're actually trying to link up with the other army. And they are going to present to me eventually a united front. So it is, um, it is in my best interest to reorganize my armies as best as I can. And you will see that I will eventually start to reorganize my armies in a formation facing in that direction. And... Uh, pretty much rinse and repeat meanwhile over here i am in the process of treating all of the troops that have taken a fair bit of casualties and i have also decided to take out my shock troops which are basically my gallic skirmishers because i feel they've done enough they have uh, exhausted their ammunition so they're not going to be as lethal and i would be much better off if i have some cavalry reinforcement so as you can see that exchange is happening quite uh, smoothly and uh, very much we are soon able to kind of sort out our right flank as well after which we will completely reorganize our arm here as you can see so i'm gonna try once again to see if the fast forward works it's gonna be a little bit choppy you know what i am actually gonna you know stop that fast forward and i am going to actually uh, cut the battle into the future when pretty much something happens and we are kind of formed up into our new um, formation. All right, so as you can see, we are almost done with realigning our troops in a new formation facing the enemy threat that's coming in from the east. Meanwhile, we are kind of reorganizing our cavalry. In the back over here, I've decided to retreat my Eagle cohort. They haven't really done all that great. Taken about 150 uh, losses and now only secured 16 kills and that is kind of expected of the first cohort unfortunately in the game is because they get focus fired as they are the most dangerous unit on the battlefield and therefore the AI just prioritizes all of their missiles on the first cohort so they are going to retreat off the battle along with another auxiliary unit that has taken about 50% casualties so I really don't want to lose any single auxiliary troop so I am being extremely cautious with my auxiliary troops and pretty much uh, for the next like uh, you know, 10 minutes or so of this battle I will be busy reorganizing my army as you can see over here 
and I'm keeping a close watch on what the enemy is doing. I am having a close eye on uh, the melee troops that are trying to link up with the other legion. And unfortunately, you can't have more than uh, 41 units in a battle. So therefore, you will be having to fight down this trickle of enemy armies. And as such, I am just pretty much going to wait for them to approach me. However, for now, I'm going to fast forward once again into the future. And I will see you all when the second engagement of this massive battle begins. Alright, so we are almost in position. And as you can see, my entire front line is almost in position. And I notice that there's a cavalry that's kind of isolated on the flank. However, since this is the edge of the battlefield, I don't really have a lot of space to maneuver. However, I decide to give charge and to kind of take them out. Meanwhile, on the left flank, I notice a Scorpio unit from the second legion. So I decide to send in my cavalry to quickly eliminate that threat. It's not a very good move because, you know, I am being attacked by the enemy towers as well as, of course, the uh, Scorpio unit decides to fire into this cavalry. And Scorpio units are actually quite good against cavalry. As you can see, they've already managed to get six kills and uh, they will continue to get more. As you can see, they're really taking a lot of casualties. However, our cavalry will be just about able to deal with this unit, which is pretty much what we need because... We'd rather them deal like 22 casualties against our cavalry unit than them dealing close to 100 casualties against our entire army. Meanwhile, back again on the right flank, uh, even though I was able to kind of, uh, you know, win the engagement against this cavalry, I decided to pull back because I noticed their first cohort uh, is joining in to support. And if they actually throw their pila, which is 400 pila, that's absolutely going to devastate my cavalry. Meanwhile, uh, you know, since the enemy units are kind of like just exchanging a volley fire over here and I really don't have any of my javelins left, put me at a slight disadvantage. So I decide to bring in my cavalry to kind of uh, tilt the odds in my favor. Meanwhile, over here, as you can see, the combat is even, but very soon that will swing in my favor. Meanwhile, our generals, all four of them that are taking part in the four legions of this battle, uh, chilling behind, kind of trying to gauge the situation. Uh, I decide that there are some melee troops over here, so it's time to pull my cavalry before they kind of get pinned. And uh, mainly the threat is going to be from the left flank, because since uh, the enemy over here is about to engage, uh, the AI has decided to kind of beeline towards my flank. So my left flank will take quite a beating. However, I will show you guys how to deal with that situation as well. Uh, and as you can see, we are going to be throwing a lot of our javelins into the backs of this cavalry and decide to charge before they charge the rears of this uh, spear unit on the left flank. I realize that our generals have to take part in this engagement before the melee troops decide to engage. And we have a couple of fact four spear units over here, which means things are really dangerous. If we do not win this engagement soon enough, we will be caught in a very bad position. So... Uh, you want to be very decisive in these moments. You want to be able to quickly deal with that situation. Meanwhile, I managed to kind of circumvent the first cohorts over here and kind of attack second cavalry unit over there. And I'm going to keep pushing because the more I push, the more I get some distance with the first cohort. But as you can see, that first cohort uh, actually performs really, really well uh, against uh, my own, uh, you know, troops. Uh, as opposed to my first cohort, which was pretty much a failure in this battle. Meanwhile, I have dealt with that Scorpio unit. However, I have taken a fair bit of casualties, 69 units, and this is yet another auxiliary troop. So I decide I'm going to move him all the way to the edge of this map on this side over here, and then retreat him out to get a fresh unit. And uh, pretty much that's what's happening. Meanwhile, our front lines have kind of engaged, but the benefits of having... Uh, Roman troops is that they are in that defensive formation so even though they have fought off an entire legion they're still fresh still eager still able to hold their own against the enemy meanwhile on the left flank as you can see we are kind of getting surrounded a lot of melee troops over here so we have to be very careful in a desperate attempt I try one last charge into the enemy but I decide that it's not in my best favor because they have a bunch of spear units coming in so I am going to pull back. Meanwhile, my generals have pulled back entirely. I am going to pull back this cavalry entirely and hope that their melee units kind of 
try to hit my own melee units in the rear, then I am going to, uh, you know, reinvest my cavalry into their rear. So <laughs> pretty much some maneuvering going on over here. And in the center, I've noticed an opening where they haven't attacked, which is a weak point. So I decide to put in a few legionaries and outmaneuver the enemy. And every single bit of advantage you can get in such battles will be absolutely critical. But as you can see, the situation on my left flank, not looking too good. Some of my cavalry is still pretty stuck in there. So I try my best to micro them out. Meanwhile, my cavalry over here uh, still being harassed by that first cohort. So I try to charge at it from all sides, but it is a first cohort. So it's not going to take a lot of moral damage. And I don't do it with absolute precision as I did with that earlier unit somewhere over there. So I don't manage to get a very clean charge and that's because I am actually microing a lot in this battle and I don't really get the time to perfect my charge over there. Meanwhile over here I notice that there is a new Scorpio unit and that is the last remaining Scorpio unit of this battle and so I decide to use my cavalry which is free to kind of go ahead and engage that unit take it out before it manages to deal some casualties while over here we have managed to get a charge off on the first cohort it is a respectable charge we managed to get approximately 40 to 50 casualties but uh, nothing too fancy they are still pretty strong and so i pretty much decide to pull out of that engagement and you have to be really quick uh, with these decisions if you want to kind of succeed uh, meanwhile, over here, I've noticed that you know, I have a couple of units that have decided not to flank my own units. So I have decided to surround them with my cavalry and try to wipe them off. Uh, however, some of the cavalry that I had issued to attack that Scorpio unit have been bogged down over here. So uh, that Scorpio unit might just get a couple of kills. Uh, however, I do manage to release one of my cavalry units. I realize uh, attacking this first cohort is a lost cause. They are pretty well... Uh, position so I instead use my generals to kind of rear charge this unit over here because if I can free up this far right flank then I will be able to kind of uh, envelop the enemy. Meanwhile my cavalry on the right flank is going to get a couple of really nice ca cycle charges on their front lines. Uh, however these are Roman troops and they're very very disciplined so uh, they are not going to break that easily. It's going to be a very much of a slog fest as you can see. A massive battle going on over here. Our own troops in that defensive formation fighting it off, really slogging it out over here. And this is the part of the battle that is absolutely brutal. The first part of the battle, we microed it to perfection. However, the second part of the battle, um, you know, it is you know, beyond <laughs> our scope to do anything much. Uh, meanwhile, I pull out my general unit on the right flank because I noticed their first cohort as kind of engaged in try to get some casualties done over here get in a, a, a really nice charge not too bad managed to get another couple of kills about 20 to 30 kills in that charge which is really respectable because we have almost dealt uh, 100 casualties but as you can see their first cohort has already outperformed our own first cohort with 72 kills I decide once again nothing much is happening over here so I decide to pull in pull back my cavalry and I decide that they do have a lot of javelins so I might as well use their javelins to kind of soften up the enemy before I rear charge. Meanwhile this last remaining spear unit is being extremely resilient uh, to my own uh, cavalry so I decide to re-micro this charge and charge at it from all directions and that's pretty much what I'm doing over here because things on my left flank are looking pretty bad. Meanwhile I decide to kind of turn face on my left flank face the real threat which is actually behind my units however the units on the far left are completely surrounded so uh, I will have to do something about that situation quite quickly um, while over here I decide to give yet another charge to their first cohort the Scorpio unit over there is completely shattered and uh, they managed to get only about like three or four kills so that is pretty good general has charged once again into the first cohort managing to do another couple of kills but once again they are standing firm and their their you know their morale is at 94 which is insane you know that's insanely high they are not gonna break these guys are gonna do be an absolute pain meanwhile uh, 
the spear unit over here has been dealt with, which means I can get a very good charge off against these couple of units over here. And I can alleviate the situation on that left flank, which is what I decide to do in this pivotal moment of the battle. Meanwhile, a new reinforcement of cavalry is making its way onto the battlefield, so I seamlessly try to integrate them into, into the fray. Meanwhile, we get a very good charge over here on our left flank. And as you can see, it was an absolutely wonderful charge. We managed to kind of waver their entire spear units over here, which is even better news for our cavalry. So I decide to let them sit in there for a while. And I kind of forget for a short time that these are Romans. They are going to waver, but they're going to get a quick hold on their morale. And although I am able to get quite a few units to completely shatter, not able to get a lot more than that. Meanwhile, I'm desperately trying to charge this first cohort again. And uh, what I decide to do is pull back one general unit and try to break out uh, the units on our right flank by piece by piece. This unit is losing decisively, which means if I can get a rare charge off, I will be able to do quite well. Meanwhile, two of the four spear units over here have completely routed. So that is great news for us. Uh, meanwhile, the other units have kind of stabilized as far as their morale is concerned. And even more bad news is that we have a couple more spear units that are marching towards the fight. So I really, really want to deal with this situation as quickly as I can. Meanwhile, the center is starting to look a lot more manageable. So I decide to keep cycle charging it to kind of, you know, turn the odds in my favor. We're doing quite a like, decent amount of damage on cycle charges, but... The Roman discipline is just, uh, you know, phenomenal. So it's not easy fighting your own Roman factions. As you can see, the first cohort is just about wavering. And uh, they have managed to get 122 kills, which is absolutely insane. Meanwhile, I'm being very cautious with Octavius. It would be a shame for him to die in this battle. As he has to go on and do a lot of great things for this campaign to come. So I am kind of playing a little bit more conservatively with him. Meanwhile, over here I managed to completely shatter one unit. And I am trying to do the same second unit. Over here, this spear unit has kind of stabilized. I managed to deal with three out of the four spear units. So I decide my cavalry have done quite well. So I'm going to pull them out before I get sandwiched with this other unit. And... Uh, I realize I have to start breaking the center really quickly because they have a bunch of uh, more spear units that are joining the battle and that's not going to be good news for my cavalry to be sandwiched between uh, two units. So, uh, Meanwhile over here, our very first unit is routing and it is a cohort from Legio 5 Macedonica. Unfortunately, they have taken more than, um, you know, a lot of casualties. There are 22 men remaining, which means they will be wiped out from the battlefield. And they will pretty much be the only unit that we lose in this battle. Because we're doing quite a good job cycling out our units. Meanwhile, over here, we are <laughs> desperately trying to move our cavalry to avoid this unit. It manages to get a very good javelin throw against us. And I decide this cavalry is not going to be able to make it across. So I kind of push it in that direction. Try to scatter like roaches as quickly as possible. I realize my cavalry is not able to break their center. So I kind of move out of the way of this incoming spear unit. Meanwhile, my right flank is looking fantastic. So I am going to reposition them in such a way to kind of present uh, L-shaped formation, which will open up more possibilities for me to flank from either side. If I'm able to break it on the right, I will be able to break it on the right and support the center. If I'm able to break it on the center, I will be able to support the right flank and vice versa. While over here, cavalry is given one final charge. Uh, I'm moving our cavalry as soon as we can to kind of deal with the spear unit. And we're pretty much trying to pin down the spear unit. Get all of our cavalry out over there. And as you can see, our troops are beginning to uh, you know, form that L formation that I spoke of earlier. Our generals for now are just taking some well-deserved rest. They've gotten a fair bit amount of kills. I mean, Octavian has kind of underperformed in this battle. But the other generals have done quite well. Meanwhile, I'm just biding for time over here with this cavalry. Because I'm actually trying to get this spear unit to commit to the melee so that I can get a clean rear charge off where I will not be taking much casualties against the spear unit. 
and you typically don't want to charge your cavalry head on to a spear unit but they are going to be able to throw some javelins off I decide that this uh, spear unit is not going to engage that easily so I decide to uh, circumvent them and charge at this spear unit in the rear if I'm able to break this unit which has already taken quite a bit of casualties uh, then you know, I will have a significant advantage on my left flank Meanwhile over here that L-shaped formation is nicely created a killing circle over here and we are going to start to exploit that as quickly as we can. And the minute you see a unit wavering like this you're left with two choices to keep your units in combat especially cavalry units. Uh, but you have to keep a close eye at the rate at which you're getting casualties and if the rate is not that fast as you can see it's hovering over 179, 178 for a while means you're not going to be able to break this unit that easily so it's you're better off just pulling your unit behind however for some reason over here i don't do it because perhaps i don't practice it as such uh, meanwhile over here i decide to get a bunch of other cavalry to kind of rear charge once again over here so i am doing quite well on the micro over here managing to get some really nice kills off against the enemy units they are wavering quite well and as you can see over here, the rate was really fast. So the rate at which you deal casualties is what basically breaks a unit. So as you can see right now, we're 168. If we are able to get 20 to 30 kills on the initial charge, then uh, we'll do quite well. Now for some reason, I pull out this cavalry and maybe that's because I noticed they have taken quite a fair bit of casualties. So I am cycling them out. As you can see, this unit over here has taken 49 or has 49 units left so it's very risky to use them meanwhile over here the charge has gone off 156 142 we're seeing they're dropping really quickly and as such they quickly broke so that's pretty much what you need to do to get that quick route going now, meanwhile over here we have another formation in the center that's kind of isolated and if i can deal with this unit over here then i can completely encircle the enemy in the center over here and that would really uh, be a massive advantage however on the left flank we have the last two remaining spearmen from the second legion so i am going to arrange my four spearmen over here in defensive formation and meanwhile use our cavalry to charge them in the rear speaking of charging in the rear we have just performed a rear charge over here but however for the same reasons they're not losing that many units that quickly so you know i will not be able to route them and uh, it is a little bit risky. You have to make that call uh, before you get sandwiched between two spear units because then you can really, really lose your cavalry. Right now over here in the center, I've realized that some of our units are not engaged in the fighting. So I am disabling that defensive formation and forcing them to join the fighting. However, as you can see, most of them are still fresh because that defensive formation really improves your stamina. As you can see some more reinforcements coming on the far left over there and meanwhile our spearmen on that left flank are going to quickly engage their spearmen and allow our own cavalry to perform a rear charge. Over here our cavalry has performed yet another rear charge. They are losing decisively but as you can see that they're not dropping that quickly so I really need to get my cavalry out. Uh, I do mismanage it a little bit and you know I realize that quickly and I pull them out. Really don't want to move your cavalry spearmen because they will take a lot of casualties especially heavy spearmen uh, you can pretty much push through lighter units and i wouldn't recommend that uh, with cavalry against spear units because they have really high bonus versus cavalry uh, but uh, you know if they are just melee units, you can absolutely do that so i decide to pull my cavalry out meanwhile over here on the left flank uh, i have really positioned well over here so i am going to charge in and if I get a perfect charge over here, you're going to see that this unit is going to absolutely break. And I, as far as I remember, I do manage to get a very beautiful charge over here. So let's actually have a look at that. It's absolutely massive charge. You can see their entire line crumble. And as you can see, they are taking severe casualties. And they are pretty much going to route out the battle really quickly. We're going to let it sit for a while and hopefully if we're able to deal some more casualties, it should route to it. Um, you know, we've kind of dealt with that very effectively. But um, yeah, I guess I was wrong. 
Uh, I did manage to get a very decent charge as far as morale was concerned, but we're not able to do that many casualties. So I decided to pull out my cavalry and charge in with my spearmen. And uh, as I pull out my cavalry, uh, ironically, begin about so. All in all, it uh, was a very good charge. Meanwhile, my center is looking like an absolute mess. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's really chaotic over here. Uh, however, I do start to notice that it is the last bit of enemy units because they are finally sending missile units, which tend to be the last units of the reinforcing armies. So right now, my plan is to kind of uh, you know, position my cavalry in a, in a way so that I can engage their missile units from both sides while sim simultaneously keeping an eye out for their spear units because I don't want my cavalry to charge into their spear units. So it's a bit of a tricky situation, but if I'm able to get some clean charges off against their missile units, then I will be able to make most of them waver, which means I will not have to be fighting this melee engagement because if I'm able to break all of the missile units, then uh, you know, we should be able to get a mass route. So that's what I'm basically trying to do at this stage of the battle pretty much trying my level best to kind of break out the missile units, kind of isolate them from their spear units and I see that happening over here on the left side so I kind of uh, decide to commit my cavalry however cavalry are going to be extremely tired because they have really fought a lot. however I do have a lot of cavalry that is kind of meanwhile over here I notice some of the missile units are attacking my spearmen who are also free so I decide to kind of Push them away so that I can use my spearmen to kind of flank into the center unit. Meanwhile, on the right flank, I, I notice a slight bit of a, you know, an opportunity to attack. However, this one cavalry, I managed to micro it out of the way because I kind of estimated it would get wedged in with, with the spearmen. Meanwhile, on the left side, I'm able to get some really clean charges off. Able to get that unit wavering. I noticed the spearmen over here, so I kind of redirect my charge into these missile units over here. So now I am absolutely uh, in control of the situation. Of course, these spearmen are going to be attacking my cavalry units. Uh, however, they're not going to have enough time to deal uh, you know, a lot of damage because once I get all of these units wavering, uh, especially the missile units, then uh, I am pretty much going to the battle, as you can see. Uh, many of them are going to be using quite decisive. Yeah. So that is the idea pretty much. And as you can see, the battle is nearly done and the entire enemy army is wavering. And uh, we have done really, really well in this battle. Just nine more seconds to remain. I decide not to spend any more time, uh, you know, uh, continuing the battle to rout out the enemy. I could end up with a lot more... Uh, casualties dealt if I had done so but I decide that it was a pretty good battle uh, uh, as per my estimate I have killed at least five to six times my numbers pretty much managed to not lose any unit with the exception of that one cohort of uh, Legio 5 Macedonica however that being said and done I'm gonna go ahead and end the battle and I will see you all in the campaign and what a battle that was uh, with that we have won a stunning victory although it says a close victory i am very very pleased with the results and we have lost about two and a half thousand troops meanwhile we have managed to kill over five times our casualties and what's more important is that we haven't lost any auxiliary troops we have lost one cohort of legio 5 macedonica but apart from that i don't think we have lost any troops um, pretty much uh, very easily replaceable we don't have to go to any of the provinces that we need to to get auxiliary troops which is pretty much what i wanted when i respect my army to have primarily uh, roman units and uh, meanwhile we have all but wiped out the main resistance of mark antony killing him in the battle and of course this means that macedonica is open for the taking However, that being said, done. I think we can just have a quick look of our situation over here. We have a one legion that we need to recruit, and that's Legio 5, uh, the cohort of Macedonica. So let's go ahead and recruit that. But before we do that, we want to respec our armies once more. So what we are going to do is we are going to just give back our troops. So we need four of these Batavian legionaries. And, of course, we have uh, 
what else do we have um i think that's about it maybe one baggage train that's perfect then we need to give back all of uh oh yeah we need to take our ranged units so let's take our syrian ranged units and uh, give back all of the cohorts of macedonica it's gonna take a bit of time as i kind of tried my level best to see uh what units i am actually transferring over back and i think that should be it of course we have legio 10 of gemina and uh i think that should be it eagle cohort perfect so i think if i do this perfect something is missing over here did we lose another Ah, this is Legio 5 Macedonica, my bad. So we need to get the last remaining cohort over there. Meanwhile, a Legio 10 Gemini should be full and that it is. Of course, we have a Legio 8 Augusta looking pretty good. Uh, Legio 13 Gemini is absolutely full. Uh, meanwhile, Legio 2 Augusta is also looking pretty good. So pretty much a very, very decisive battle to defeat the legions of Mark Antony. While some of the Romans have fled away and maybe we should try to uh, pursue them. And uh, or maybe we can just wait a turn for all of our troops to replenish as I really want them to replenish the full. Um, what I can do, however, is attack this big stack over here because I don't want them to I want to keep uh, the way to Thessalonica fairly clear. I mean, it is not a very favorable auto-resolve, but I am going to auto-resolve this one. I have no fear of losing any units, and we have pretty much just fought a massive battle, so um, I'm not too concerned with preserving my units. I'll move back. You can go on patrol stance with that guy, while a Legio 8 Augusta can come a little bit closer. So what I'm going to do is just try to move, inch our armies a bit closer so that they can you know begin their offensive immediately come the next turn and of course we want to move Octavian himself the hero of the battle and we want to move even the other army other army I think I can move a little bit over here so that I can attack Pharsalus from through this pass in the next turn however with that I think I am done with this turn so I'm going to go ahead end the turn and keep in mind of course, I am going to, you know, build up the provinces, build up my armies in the turn between turns to kind of save the amount of turns that are, uh, or save the time that this episode is taking, as you can see, for a pretty massive 45 minute battle. So we are kind of running out of time for this episode. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead, end the turn, and I will see you all in the next turn when I'm ready to conquer the remainder of the Hellenic world from Mark Antony's faction. Alright, welcome to the next turn. Some of the characters have leveled up and others have returned from missions. So we are in the process of reducing our influence. As you can see, we are now at 93% and we begun the episode with uh, 96%. So slowly whittling it down. And of course, one of the things we can do to keep decreasing it is by hiring rival politicians. The rival politicians pretty much will ensure that um, you know, we have uh, you know, decreasing influence. So uh, pretty much just leveling them up because I do have an academy in Roma itself. And I am not prioritizing empire maintenance because currently we have zero empire maintenance. So we're looking very good as far as empire maintenance is concerned. However, of course, I am in the process of still, uh, you know, specking up my armies, putting them all in there. Uh, respective locations but I'm not going to be showing that pretty much going to be doing that in the turn between turns and what I'm going to focus on is try to conquer as much as I can within this episode so let's go ahead and attack that settlement it's looking like a very good auto resolve so you have taken over Pharsalus the remaining resistance of uh, Mark Antony's faction is crumbling which means we can attack even Thessalonica one of the armies managed to retreat over there but can auto resolve it fairly favorable auto resolve and we're going to peacefully occupy all of these are roman settlements and of course i want to spec this into our um auxiliary uh recruitment so definitely want to make sure that we're specking things right and um 
Apart from that, we do have the Legio Valeria Victress over here that can push in deeper. And uh, we can keep this army kind of isolated, which is kind of good. Meanwhile, what we're going to do is we're going to push deeper and uh, take out Legio 5 Alaude. Um, and if we take out Legio 5 Alaude, that is the last remaining threat on the Hellenic inland. Uh, so let's go ahead attack them. He should retreat because he doesn't have uh, all of that uh, you know, positive uh, modifiers. We're going to go ahead attack Athens. Uh, meanwhile, we are going to move as close as we can so that we can re-attack uh, Legio 5 Alaude. And now we should have a crazy auto-resolve. So let's go ahead auto-resolve it over there. Once again, we haven't lost any units. Um, I am enslaving Romans, which is kind of not what uh, Octavius did. However, I'm just so used to <laughs> enslaving captives. But I should be uh, following a lenient policy. So let's go ahead and just peacefully occupy Athens. And that is great, which means uh, we should have a lot more going on for us over here. Um, not entertainment from culture. Oh, actually, yes, we kind of need that over there because it is Gortina does have fish in the province which means it's not going to be super ideal for that and uh, that being said and done we can't actually even push into Sparta in this turn so let's go ahead quickly attack Sparta and uh, auto resolve quick auto resolve over there peacefully occupy the settlement and uh, we're going to dismantle that barracks meanwhile build up everything over there perfect and things are looking really really good uh, we go ahead and redeploy our dignitary as you can see, our economy is looking fantastic with that. We're going to turn on the commercial stimulation edict, of course. Uh, meanwhile, we are going to dock uh, Octavian to the port of Athens. And uh, what we are going to do is we are also going to see if we can level up any characters. Of course, we can level up this legion. So let's go ahead and give him those army traditions. And of course, we also want to raise army and i think i am getting praetorians to be charged no just regular generals so it's fine i mean my economy is uh, well able to handle it so let's just actually get general over there and we're gonna put him up in sparta and of course he's going to a lictor sparta perfect have a lictor of gortina over there and of course we want the lictor of athena but we're gonna have to wait until we can get um, Octavian out of the port over there and in the next turn he will be moving towards Ephesus and continuing the conquest of Asia Minor. Meanwhile down south in Africa things are not looking too good as this uh, garrisoned army is not in any mood to attack my fleet. I was kind of hoping that the numerical uh, superiority would kind of entice the enemy AI to attack my fleet and it would end up being a very easy battle but however they are staying kind of put in the settlement of Kyrene which is uh, which is fair. Uh, I mean, kudos to them for doing that. However, uh, conversely, what it is doing is it's that it's kind of keeping, uh, you know, Vespinacius Agrippa in Macomades. He's unable to kind of uh, attack. And the idea was to attack Kyrene and then use him along with the fleet to kind of uh, take over uh, the Levant. As you can see, um, the Antony faction is also under attack by Nabatea. So, I uh, really didn't want to lose any provinces uh, to these factions that are kind of taking advantage of the fact that we are in the midst of a civil war. So, uh, however, that being said and done, it's that we will have to eventually go to war with these factions in order to take over our Roman provinces. Uh, however, that being said and done, we can look at the Far East. And in the Far East, we have a legion over here that can kind of push towards Amaroia kind of begin the conquest of Armenia and as such we can keep pushing really good auto resolve again we don't really need to fight any more battles I believe for this episode because we have done absolutely amazing as far as battles are concerned for this episode uh, however over here what I do want to do is I want to build up our auxiliary stuff so let's go ahead because we do have some nice auxiliaries in these regions uh, meanwhile, a leg of Oskitika can also push forward and um, maybe I could attack our Samosata and keep pushing down south towards the Levant to kind of uh, prevent the Nabataeans from conquering too much. So let's go ahead and attack our Samosata. Hopefully there are no enemies over there. 
seems like, uh, you know, with that major battle, the faction of Antony is just crumbling and we are just, you know, blitzing our way, conquering almost everything in sight. Let's go ahead and dismantle all these buildings because we actually did to um, you know, build up the province for, of course, um, the auxiliary type setup. That being said and done, I think I am done for this turn, so I am going to go ahead and end the turn. Of course, I am going to partake in some more army restructuring over here. As we have defeated a lot of legions over here, including Legio Fire Lare, Legio 7, Claudia Piafidelis, Legio Ferrata, etc, etc. And so, of course, I am rebuilding all of those legions to kind of serve Octavius himself. And apart from that, I am also slowly respecking our provinces and it will take a lot of time to showcase however once the civil war is done i will showcase uh in the next episode the build of my empire and the various provinces that it uh, contains however with that i'm gonna go ahead end the turn and see you all the next turn all right welcome to the next turn the all of our characters returning back from mission the sun has come of age and need to assassinate any son that comes of age because of course um don't really um you know have ability to kind of sustain a lot of uh, political members in our faction that is because I'm trying to figure out a 10 10 10 character do i have any because i want to level up here we go okay i want to level up wife of octavius so let's go ahead and do that the reason being is because I also want to assassinate certain characters. So, son has come of age. Let's have a look who it is. And go ahead and assassinate him. There he is. And uh, this will kind of keep our influence in check and keep dropping it. As you can see, we are now 92 as far as influence is concerned. And we're going to hire yet another politician. Uh, where did he go? Here. Right, so we are going to go ahead and give him... All of those things that we need to give him. Of course, just quickly level him up. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, as you can see, we are now finally in positive income. So that is actually uh, really good for us. So we're going to move Legio 10 Gemina across uh, the Aegean. While we are also going to move Legio 5 Macedonica as well to kind of assist him. Um, while a Legio 8... Augusta can also move and we're taking a bit of attrition over here but we don't have to worry about that because we have a fleet that will support them. Uh, we do have a big legionary over here, Legio 6 Ferrata, uh, protecting Pergamon and uh, we are definitely going to be uh, taking Pergamon for ourselves. Um, however, before we do that, we are going to keep pushing with our army and we're going to attack Samosata next. going to keep pushing down south. And if they have a legion all the way in Asia, means uh, pretty much their easternmost provinces are undefended. As I do believe that will be the last legion they actually have. So, we can go ahead and keep pushing our offensive. We can go ahead and attack Tigrana Serta as well. And uh, can also resolve this one as well. Peacefully occupied settlement. And of course, we'll definitely need to respect over there. And actually, they have a uh, siege workshop so that means we can hire a ballista in our easternmost legionaries which is great news. our characters have leveled up so let's go ahead give them some abilities meanwhile we have got even the army traditions so let's go ahead and do that as well uh, of course i'm going to build that up eventually however for now i uh, just simply to keep pushing with this army there's no time for actually getting a siege weapon in this army or the Balliste to be precise because they're going to have to keep pushing down south in order to prevent uh, Navatea from capturing some Roman provinces. We do have a like 21 Rapax as well over here. While in Africa things are still looking uh, to be a stalemate so let's keep moving Legia 12 Fulminata to kind of assist Agrippa uh, taking over uh, Kairu. However, we're going to move back Legio 3 Augusta in Carthago Nova and give him that Feliste uh, that we so desperately need for that legion. Let's go ahead and make sure that he is in the settlement so that he can recruit. And there we go. 
And of course, I have learned that, you know, over modding a campaign like this tends to kind of lag the game a lot. So obviously, this is being a Roma series, so I did have to mod it to make it very entertaining. However, in the future series, uh, the modding will be toned down by quite a significant amount. Uh, well, we can move back here to Valeria Victress into the both of Atinai again. And uh, also want to move. Oh, this is great. We can move even Legio to Augusta into the Aegean Sea. Now we have four legions that are ready to launch an invasion, a massive invasion of Asia. Once we get a hold of Asia, and wow, we can even move Legio 13 Gemina. So let's go ahead and move Legio 13 Gemina into the Aegean Sea. Now all of these are being supplied by Classes 1 Roma Victress, and which only means that in the next turn we're going to have a massive massive influx uh, invading Asia and we'll be able to conquer quite a significant amount of provinces or regions in the next turn however here in Rhodus we can hire a governor general so let's go ahead raise a fleet go ahead give him uh, the cheapest fleet possible so that we kind of have um, you know not that much of an upkeep and we're gonna go ahead in Lictor of Rhodus with the Roman spelling and with that, I am ready to go ahead and end the turn. And pretty much the next turn will be our last turn for this episode. And uh, that being said and done, I will see you all in the future once I have done respecking all of my provinces uh, that need to be built up. And of course, um, you know, even uh, reorganizing my armies, especially the ones in Gallia and Hispania. All right, welcome to the final turn of this episode. Our characters have returned from missions, as well as a daughter has come of age, so we are going to go ahead and assassinate him. It's great, we have lost a little bit more influence. As you can see, our influence is at 84, which is fantastic. Um, while our daughter has just come of age, we definitely, definitely want to assassinate her. But before we do that, let us quickly level up our character over here. Go ahead, that's the daughter, and we have assassinated her. Meanwhile, Quick look if you can see if we can assassinate anyone else and I would like to do that if we possibly can. Of course we can't so that's that. Meanwhile we can send uh, Livia Drusus on a vacation to kind of improve her cunning. Uh, apart from that make sure we hire another politician and he's going to be off the uh, Plebis Council so let's go ahead give him those uh, deeds quickly and Excellent. Quickly level up all of them. Perfect. Right, and I'm happy with that. Meanwhile, what has happened turn between turns is I kind of forgot about this army that was sitting over here in Pharsalus at the uh, mouth of the Gulf of Corinth. So it's moved back all the way and recaptured Pharsalus. But we have Legio 22 Valeria Victress, thankfully, in the port of Athens. So we're going to go ahead and attack him. And now we have kind of secured our hopefully haven't lost any troops by doing that wasn't really a favorable auto resolve don't have much time this episode so i was kind of forced to take that auto resolve uh, however with that i think things are looking good as far as the hellenic uh, mainland is concerned uh, speaking of the hellenic mainland we can finally raise our final fleet over here and uh, go ahead deploy him to the port over there Give him a supply ship and rename him to Pro Praetore of Achaia. Perfect. And uh, now we have a lot of agents over here, so let's go ahead quickly attack Ephesus. We can do that with the Legio 5 Macedonica quickly. And in doing so, we have secured the port of Ephesus, which means our other leaders can kind of push in deeper into Asia. So, quick look to see. Which of the legions can kind of support at Pergamon? Can't really do that with many legions, but we can do it with two legions. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'll move this other legion as close to Port of Ephesus as possible. Uh, and we are going to send Legio 13 Gemini to deal with Pergamon as well as support him Legio 2 Augusta. Should be a decent or favorable auto resolve, I do believe. And can do that have decent auto resolve okay 69% I'm happy with that 
shouldn't lose any troops. We can peacefully occupy Pergamon. We have almost conquered our Asian province. Meanwhile, in the far east, we are going to push down south towards Antioch. Uh, keep in mind, we do have the problem of another legion, Rapax, in the area. So we are going to go ahead quickly attack Antioch. And uh, we made quite good progress as far as the civil war is concerned. And uh, over here with Legio 15 Apollonaris, we're going to attack Karana and complete our conquest of Armenia. To which Legio 15 Apollonaris can assist in the conquest of the Levant. So things are looking quite good as you can see overall in the map. We have managed to kind of split up uh, the forces of Antony. So we're going to keep pushing, pushing deep into Asia in the next episode however. For this episode uh, we'll have to kind of wait on conquest of Kyrene as we're not quite there yet. Uh, however Legio 12 Fulminata has just reached uh, close enough and uh, in the turn between turns I will be conquering Kyrene and perhaps a couple more Levant provinces and in the future we will be or in the future episode we will conclude the civil war. However, with that, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you like the video, like the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more peace and love.